Certainly, just being a fan of so many of the large format films of the 50s and 60s that were told in a direct cinema style, that's what I wanted to do with Apollo 11. The way we discovered the 65 millimeter and seeing it for the first time was something I'll never forget. There was two reels, and we put them on a prototype scanner that the guys at Final Frame here built. And you would just see these little bursts of imagery about every three or four seconds. One of the defining aspects of this project was the 65 millimeter film. And what we wanted to do was scan this in a way so that no one has to go back to this film again. In order to do that, we had to create a new scanner that could scan 8K and 16K resolutions. We were running the most important film in the world on a scanner that was a prototype. It was inspiring and terrifying. Good morning, Neil. Good morning. Welcome aboard. We were all dumbstruck immediately at how beautiful the cinematography was. The detail in the footage that we were seeing was something I, I just had never seen before. There was three or four of us in the room, just speechless. Honey, you're gonna extend that time out. We recreated the entire mission in nine days. So we have a timeline where you can look and see over a hundred tracks of audio. And that took the better half of a year just to compile that. We were working with 18,000 hours of uncatalogued audio, 11,000 hours of which was from Apollo 11. Happened at time that the NASA official who escorted us over to this site. We had hundreds of reels of footage, including the 16 and 35. And we had 70 millimeter 10 perf, which is something that most people have never even heard of. It was used as an engineering format for the government. It was petabytes of data when it was finally transferred. It's cool, because when you watch the film, you don't feel like it's something happening 50 years ago. It feels contemporary, and that is part of the artistry of the people who were actually shooting the footage. It's also the artistry of the National Archives and their expertise in preserving this material. It was in pristine condition. You have to kind of whittle down what are the key moments. What were the moments of humanity that happened? What were the things that stood out? What really got me was the emotion on their faces. You could see the weight of what they were about to do in a way that I had never seen it before. And that's when I knew that we had something. Now, 2001 A Space Odyssey has been called the best film ever made. The Star Wars movies make up a billion dollar franchise fueled by rabid obsessive fans. Even the highest grossing film of all time, Avatar, is a sci-fi film. Yet, despite the frequent acclaim and fandom that science fiction movies attract, no sci-fi film has ever won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Hmm, maybe in the not so distant future?